What is up, everybody from our at t 5G virtual studios? Welcome on into the call up. I am Susanna Collins. That is the fabulous Jillian Sackovitz. Um, oh my goodness, we are so excited about this episode today we because we are we use the word legend a lot in this uh, <laughs> in this industry. But Brianna Scurry is uh, the real deal, man. Um, just an incredible trailblazer. 173 caps for the, U- the U.S. It's the second most among all female goalkeepers of all time. She is a World Cup winner, part of that historic 99 team. She made that huge save to help them win it all. Two-time Olympic gold medalist and a 2017 inductee into the National Soccer Hall of Fame. The first black woman to be awarded that honor. And the first... Goalkeeper, is that correct? Female I believe goalkeeper. female yep. goalkeeper. She is an active member of the LGBTQ plus community and has been since the 90s. Um, she's got a memoir coming out, My Greatest Save, that's coming out on June 21st. There is a documentary on Paramount Plus coming out, the only that's going to highlight her incredible life and soccer journey. Um, that is going to premiere on July 12th. It, it's just we were going through, we were doing the research for, for this interview, and it's incredible. It's truly, truly remarkable what she has accomplished and how important she is for soccer in this country and sports in this country, for women, for women of color, for the LGBTQ plus community. Um, she has been just a complete advocate and champion for so many underrepresented people, and it is incredible to see that she it it feels like this was long overdue all the recognition that she's now getting and writing this memoir and the documentary it's so overdue jill because she she's a hero she's a legitimate hero for this this country and this conversation that we had with her was beyond inspiring you want to be a goat go talk to brianna scurry um you want to know what it takes you want to know about she talks a lot about rooms you know like having a room for this moment Mm -hmm. a room for that moment and rooms that we didn't know about and you will know in reading um the book and you know it while you're you know you know of course the name brianna scurry and that's not new to many of our listeners and it might be to some of you and that's okay um but i think that in our research and prep for this um it just made you think a lot of this is coming around. It's very cool. She reveals she's getting, um, you know, a lot more TV work coming up this summer, which we're all really excited about. Um, but you're also just like, it's been a long time coming for her about mm-hmm. 20 years overdue that she she reveals to us off camera in our chat that someone she loves is Tom Brady, like go and go. I love that. Yeah. Um, but Tom Brady gets the recognition always and all the time. Yes. Uh, Brianna Scurry has had to wait. And I don't love that. No. And I can't wait to read more about this book. Um, and, you know, she talks about like giving up anger and being mad about things. And if I take any lessons from talking to her, it's that don't be mad that Brianna Scurry, that this is overdue. Be happy that it's out now and that we can learn more and be so here for it um, now. So I, this was a great interview. And I, I mean this when I say it. I can't wait to read the book. It's time now for our AT&T 5G call to the field. Two-time Olympic gold medalist, World Cup champion, Hall of Fame goalkeeper, Brianna Scurry. Oh Hi. What a day. What a day. I Hi, bow. Brianna. I bow. I bow. Thank We're you. not worthy. That's so kind. <laughs> This is incredible. Uh, Brianna, again, it's just it's such an honor to have you on the call up today. Um, you have you have so much going on in your yes. life right now. <laughs> You've got this documentary yes, do. coming out. There's a <laughs> memoir that's about to be published. Did you did you ever imagine that this point in your life would look like it does right now? No, actually, I would have thought that this point would have been 20 years ago, maybe (laughs) after the big save at the World Cup or an Olympic Games or something. Um, But better late than never, I guess. Right. So, yeah, it's the trifecta people are calling it with the with the book and the uh, the documentary and um, also broadcasting uh, for the Women's World Cup uh, qualifiers in July. So it's really cool. Oh, that's so exciting. We look forward to you on that. Uh, you mentioned your memoir, My Greatest Save. 
What is a little nugget you can give us a, a little teaser to get the people excited? Oh, well, I will say that my greatest save that you think it is, is actually not what you think it is. Oh, so, ooh, I right. love that. <laughs> what a teaser. What teaser. a teaser. I love it. We're going to we're going to dive into that um, in just a little bit. But yes. Brianna, you've had I, it's I, I'm running out of superlatives to like describe <laughs> your career and everything that you have accomplished in your life. Um, you. But I think we want to kind of like start with the evolution of Brianna Scurry. Right. Yes. You grew up in Minneapolis. You were the youngest of nine, nine kids. Yeah. Is that yeah. correct? OK, that's right. So I'm I'm very curious as to what that looked like for you and how how that experience growing up in in that kind of family dynamic shaped you as an athlete well let me let me frame that for you i'm the youngest of nine um i'm also nine years younger than my next closest sibling Whoa. which was my sister <laughs> daphne so i literally was an oops baby if you, if you will <laughs> So most of my brothers and sisters were already out of the household by the time I came along. And uh, seven of those nine are also half brothers and sisters, obviously either my mom or my father's uh, ch children um, by blood. So, uh, but I, I consider them all my entire, my, my full, my full uh, siblings. And for me, it was uh, really a great uh, childhood. My, my sister Daphne, who was in the household with me, uh, you know, was very kind, very protective and was really my, like my hero. And, and so she was a great example for me. She used to drive me to some of my karate lessons back in the day when I, when I did karate and also went, attended a lot of my games with my mom and dad uh, growing up. So I had a fantastic household and uh, it was a little bit emptier than, than it may sound uh, uh, at first plunge. Brianna, and, you know, correct us if we're wrong. We were just going crazy on the internet doing a deep dive and we know how, where that can go, but it seems like there's been such a theme throughout your career. I read mm. that on your soccer team, on your 12 year old soccer team, um, you were the only African-American and the only girl on that team. Fast forward, um, to, you know, 30 plus years later, and you're the first female goalkeeper and the first African-American woman inducted into the soccer Hall of Fame. Did it always feel like that? Or is that just something you got used to right away? And even when you started this interview, I love what you said when you're like, I, I would have thought that these moments for me would have been coming yeah. 20 years ago. Like yeah. they probably should, like not they probably, like they should have. <laughs> Thank you. Well, it's, it's interesting because um, in the process of doing the book, uh, that really was uh, clearly a theme of my mm -hmm. career. And I, I knew it at the time, because you can just look around and you can see that you're the only, um, whether it was African-American, the only out uh, player on the national team, the only out lesbian at the time, the the only, uh, like you said, goalkeeper, African-American goalkeeper in the Hall of Fame. And so that has been my life, but it wasn't necessarily something that I really ever thought was uh, something that was holding me back. Um, and actually it was really made clear to me that I was the only, um, after my mom passed away in 2015 and in January, I went home and looked at some of her, her keepsakes that she had in this like cedar chest that she kept. And she had every single one of my, my youth team photos, mm. like in a big stack. And so as I'm, you know, mourning my mother, I'm looking at these photos and I'm literally the only one in every <laughs> single photo. And it really wasn't until later in my life that I would look back and I'm like, yeah, I, I was. <laughs> I was a trailblazer in a, a lot of different ways. And that was one of them. It's Sorry incredible. for your loss, by the way. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Um, you, I mean, your place in sort of the, the sporting world right now, you are a, a role model to so many, so many people, so many people from different walks of life, be it black athletes, female athletes, LGBTQ plus athletes. When you were growing up, and I know you were an incredible athlete, you played pretty much every sport under the sun, not just <laughs> soccer, but who were there people that you looked up to and you, you know, kind of saw a path for yourself. Was there anybody that you sort of idolized uh, growing up? Yeah, actually, my inspiration to become an Olympian started when I was eight years old watching the 1980 Lake Placid ice hockey team. And 
Uh, a lot of people would say, well, did you always want to be Jim Craig, who was their goalie at the time spinning on his head? And I said, well, no, at the time, I just wanted to be an Olympian. But obviously, the goalkeeping thing just, you know, fit me. So I just ended up doing it. Uh, but yeah, I mean, that was the inspiration for for that path of being an Olympian. And I also had role models. Um, of course, my mom and dad were fantastic support role models for me, but also in basketball. I was a basketball player. I loved playing basketball. And so uh, Pearl Washington, who was mm. a basketball player for um, Syracuse, and also Cheryl Miller, who played at USC and was a basketball player um, in college. So those were two of my, my role models as well. Oh, I'm loving this Miracle on Ice crossover, too. This is awesome. Um, <laughs> you know, you mentioned all these sports, soccer, track and field, um, softball, um, you know, basketball, uh, I know, deep in your heart. So when was it, because as we, you know, as high school athletes, we know at some point you got to start to make up your mind. When was that moment that you decided, you know what, I'm going to focus on soccer? Yeah, it actually, um, that's a great question because the decision uh, in order to go to college, I knew I'd have to get a scholarship, pretty much a full boat because my parents didn't have a lot of money to be able to afford for me to go even in state in Minnesota would have been uh, rather, rather uh, a big financial expense for them. And so it became clear to me that I probably would have a lot better opportunities um, to go to college through a soccer scholarship than, than a basketball or softball scholarship. I was recruited by 77 zero different colleges in, cool. in my high school time, but the best opportunities were in soccer because I was an All-American goalkeeper um, in high school. That is incredible. Oh my gosh. My parents, <laughs> my parents would have been like over the moon, over the moon. Not that many offers for me. <laughs> that, a big, yeah, exactly. Aww. <laughs> big goose egg. Big That's fat all goose right, egg. girl. You're doing just fine. You're doing fine. It's all good. Brianna will share. We'll share some of those. Um, yes. it, it is. It's just, uh, it's incredible. And we're so honestly, uh, I mean, I don't think that path could have worked out uh, better for you. I'm embarking on that soccer journey, 173 caps that you made for the U S women's national team. Just, I mean, you are, you're an icon. You are some cemented in, in history um, and such a huge part of the growth of soccer, especially women's soccer right now in this in this country. And I know for Jill and I, you know, we think back on that 99 World Cup and that was huge. That was huge for us as as women in sports. That was such a moment we had never seen a women's team being celebrated like that. And yeah. you were so integral on that team. You only allowed three goals that entire tournament, making the huge save in the <laughs> PK shootout. I relive that moment a ton because again, it was so important to me, but Brianna, do you ever, how often have you ever like, do you replay that <laughs> moment, making that <laughs> save in, in the game? Because I feel like I would just live on that for the rest of my life. <laughs> Well, I just want to say thank you for saying that about um, how that inspired you in your 100%. life. And it's truly uh, an honor and part of my legacy that I really so greatly appreciate that what we did inspired so many women in a positive way uh, to do amazing things in their own lives. And I got to say, I do I do replay that. I, I watched that, that video, especially in the last year and a half, um, writing the book and, and whatnot, <laughs> and just really seeing... Uh, trying to make sure that everybody feels what I felt when I was playing and some uh, some of those uh, writings that we did for the, some of those games. And so watched a lot of soccer of myself lately. <laughs> so it was very interesting. Uh, but, you know, it, it never gets old. I guess going to say it's always it's always uh. amazing. I always get excited, even though I know exactly what's going to happen. I get the goosebumps. I'm like, this is the one, you know what I mean? hundred. And it it's always coming. will be. <laughs> so it's cool. I love that. It's so true what Susanna said. I, you know, I can think about playing soccer at the time or even just being a kid and even just being a girl and and really not even having a true understanding that there were professional female athletes like you knew that there were some on commercials or on an ad here and there like when you went to the shoe section for girls but like other than <laughs> that it took that world cup to be like oh no like they're doing it so yeah, yeah credit to to what Susanna's point was there um but can you tell us something there's been so much written and discussed about that 1999 team is there something that maybe gets overlooked or not talked about enough oh I I think What's interesting about it 
that probably a lot of people don't realize um, is that we we were just you know 20 girls just trying to do our thing <laughs> and and it's funny because you look you think about it you're like oh did you guys know you were having an impact this and that for me personally I didn't really realize how big of it I mean obviously we we're filling the stadiums like that's clear yeah. um, but that was two years of work you know barnstorming all over the country to try to um, gain visibility and meet a lot of people in the soccer community to have them come and see our games but it wasn't really really um, settling with me until Robin Roberts showed up <laughs> at our training session out in California and sat down with me after training and had an interview. That's when I truly was like, wow, Robin <laughs> Roberts is here. Holy cow. Right. And that was back then she was a sports uh, personality. Now she's, you know, amazing GMA, does this amazing things all the time and actually wrote the foreword for my book, which is really cool. cool. Uh, oh, no yeah. way. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. And so I think that's one of the things is that we, we weren't naive, or I would say, let me speak for myself. I wasn't naive to not know what was happening, but I tell you that Ripple ended up being a lot bigger uh, than, than I thought at the time. And yeah. thank goodness. And, and I'm, I'm just glad everything worked out well. <laughs> and then we won. And we won. And we and won. We won. <laughs> the entire country won. Oh man, what a moment. Yes. Um, okay. So I want to talk about your, your memoir, um, because I have to imagine that writing a memoir is, um, I, I, I feel like you probably encounter and go through a whole host of emotions when yes. you're putting things that are so deeply personal out on, on paper for yeah. the entire world to read. And you've had some really, uh, you know, for all the highs that you've had, there've been some incredible, incredible lows. And yeah. it's a very vulnerable position to, to put yourself in. So um, just a huge amount of credit to you for, for the bravery in that. But you. Um, you know, what was it like? What, like, was it, was it overwhelmingly cathartic for you? Was it scary? Was it all of the above, you know, kind of walk us through that journey of putting this all down? Absolutely. So, I mean, that is actually one of the most amazing things um, that I felt writing this book with Wayne Coffey. He was wonderful and really helping me probe into the feeling space of things. And before we even started First of all, we started March 20th or March 2020 pandemic, <laughs> right? The beginning of the pandemic is when we first started doing this. So hello, not a bad omen, I hope, right? So, um, but yeah, it was very cathartic because like you said, I've had amazing highs and some really deep, deep lows. And that's literally my whole life. It's either way up here and I am just on top of the world, literally the best in the world. And then... I'm down here in the gutter with my face in it, right? And so I, I felt very, very strongly that I had to get to the feeling space of my entire life, the good and the bad. And I had to go back into these rooms, if you will. If you consider things in your life, pivotal moments, good or bad, as rooms, some of those rooms, you lock that door, you barricade, and you don't go back in there even, you know, 10 years down, 20 years down. And so I literally had to go back into some of these rooms uh, and, and, and put some light on in there and actually go to that space the way I felt at the time in order to be able to write it properly and accurately and with wow. authentic authenticity. And so it was very cathartic because now I have essentially swept all the rooms of my life in areas where there was probably, you know, some definite need to be doing that. And so I was able to do that with the book and I, and I've forgiven myself and so many other people um, throughout that process. What were some of those rooms, Brianna? So the obvious ones are, you know, my, both my parents passing away. I was literally mm -hmm. in the room when my dad died at the hospital. We went in there. Um, the Hope Solo situation, we clearly, delve into that and i gave my true feeling authentic uh feeling and emotion and how i felt about that situation so there's that we went into the room where i was at my lowest lows with regarding to my 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 head injury my concussion and how it got 
really bad in that last, that third year of dealing with it and pawning my medals. I mean, talk about, you know, a gut punch for me. And that was something that I had not told anyone, wow. not a soul knew about it until Krissa asked me about my medals and I wanted to tell her mm -hmm. and my heart was beating out of my chest. You know what I mean? And so I had to go back there to that feeling of the day that I did that. And I wanted to make sure that the reader could feel what I felt in that moment. And so that's another one. And then, of course, and, you know, a lot of people, when they look back on 99, they're like, you're amazing. And then, but guess what? 2000, the Olympic Games didn't play a single minute. So what happened there? Like a lot of people don't know that story. And so I went back there to back then I was angry like angry for an entire year. And I had to go back into that space and, and sweep that room too. So those are some great examples of, of areas where I needed some healing and the book helped me do that. Oh man, that is uh, that's some really, really powerful, powerful stuff. And I think that your message and your words are going to help a lot of people, you know, like that can be scary. That can be really scary to confront okay. those rooms and open those up. Um, so it's just really important. Um, so it's incredible what you've done. Um, you've also, you've become a mentor to, to so many young players, Trinity Rodman, who has yeah. just taken the, the soccer world by, yeah. by storm when you, yes. you know, and she is a, this is a young black woman who yeah. has had the privilege of looking up to somebody like you, um, in her career, which I, I think is just so astounding. What is, you know, for you, what is the most important sort of piece of guidance that you can give young players that are looking to you uh, for that kind of mentorship based on your experiences? So I, I have a firm belief that my purpose here is to create and to inspire. And so the first thing I would say is figure out what your purpose is, um, the, you know, whether it's being a great mom um, eventually, or, you know, being a CEO or being, uh, you know, a high level athlete or anything in, in between, figure out what your purpose is. And then what I did was I created this book so that it may inspire all of those who read it. And in the, in the creation, I was thinking about how I could help people truly see that success isn't a straight line and that it goes like this. And sometimes you're going one way and you feel like you're almost there. And all of a sudden something slams down in your way and you have to figure out, do I go around? Do I go through? Do I go under, you know, what do I do now? And, and to, to develop resilience because resilience is probably the, one of the most uh, important traits you could possibly have because you will always have something in your way. And that's just part of the journey. And that's actually a great place to have growth when you're trying to toil and figure out how to get past this obstacle. And I think it's really important. And so for somebody like Trinity or, you know, young players like, like Midge Purse and, and all these other great players, I just want to be someone who is cheering them on and hopefully they can read my book and see, you know, Hey, Bri went through some crazy stuff and she got through it eventually, you know, with some help from some unexpected places and you just never know, just go one more day because you never know where the hope, where the help is coming from. You mentioned, um, you know, so many achievements and no matter what your job is, I think it's very easy for people to look at like, Oh, well look at what they're doing. You know, everything must be, must be great for them. But obviously, you know, in reading your book or just knowing anything about you as an athlete, you know that it's not a straight line. Um, like you mentioned, we rattled off um, your accolades. Uh, but when you look back at what you've accomplished so far, what are some of the things that you are most proud of that maybe aren't in your Wikipedia? Well, one thing that is definitely something that is has been the most humbling thing ever for me is the uh, National Museum of African American History and Culture being in that museum and that Smithsonian when I got the um, contact from the curators there, I didn't really understand that what I had done was worthy wow. of, of such praise and and you know being in the game changers exhibit 
I mean, I knew I was changing the game, but I didn't know I was doing it to that level where a museum and the curators thought my body of work was impression that making that impression on my culture. And so I was very humbled by that. Um, I'm humbled every day by my amazing wife who, who chooses me every day. And I feel like I've been through some stuff that I, I feel like I do deserve great love, a great love of my life. And I'm very happy about that, but I'm also grateful that I have that opportunity to have her in my life every day. And so I would also say that, you know, sometimes it takes pressure on coal to make a diamond. Mm. And so don't ever forget that you can have amazing outcomes in situations that may seem like things you don't want to deal with. Just get to work, you know, have resilience, get to work. And then at some point down the road, if it was super difficult, like a death or, or some change that you didn't want, maybe you can see the silver lining in that once you get away from it for a little while, but it's, it's always there. I'm going to be like, just re-listening to this conversation for the rest of it. <laughs> like, this is just like, like feeding my soul right now. Um, such incredible words. Well, wait till you read the book, Suze. I know. <laughs> That's I right, like, Suze. <laughs> get my hands on it right now um well okay so in addition to this book there's also a documentary yes. on your life that's coming out the only premieres on paramount plus on july 12th we saw the trailer last week which uh looks in incredible what can we expect from that how and how is it different from the memoir how is it different well it's a visual okay it's a visualization Just... of all those things that i mentioned in, in the memoir. And the interesting thing about your question earlier about being the only, <laughs> I mean, the name of the, of the documentary, you know, says it in visual form. And so I think what you're going to see in there are some amazing things that my teammates said about me. Now that's, mm -hmm. that's the thing that I think really floored me. And that is going to floor some other folks because you don't really know how well you've lived until you have other people testify to how you've done things in your life. And there's a, a couple of scenes in there, in that trailer, what Abby said, for example, about being out there and being out of, of the closet and making her feel like she and Megan Rapino can be their authentic selves. I didn't know that Abby felt that way about me. Wow. Mm -hmm. And so these are things that you're going to learn in that, in that documentary right along with me, because I'm not going to watch it until I watch it with everyone else. <laughs> so it's going to be very, very raw, very mm -hmm. real. Um, but I think it's going to be uh, groundbreaking. I really powerful. Do. When you mention, yeah. um, you know, watching that in full for the for first time, um, who will you be watching with? Oh, who? Yeah. Um, I actually, <laughs> I actually think I'm going to be on the road um, doing, do, yeah, right, <laughs> doing the mm -hmm. uh, World Cup qualifying. I believe I might actually be in, Mex in Mexico working with CBS Paramount Plus, watching the premiere of my documentary on Paramount Plus. <laughs> so I think that's where I'm going to be. Amazing, amazing. Well, Bron, before we let you go, of course, uh, June is Pride Month. And, and on that on that note, um, certain is there a message you have for our listeners before we let you go? I tell you, what, especially with Pride, um, inclusion is so important and being an ally. I, I feel more strongly than ever about the importance of allies and the importance of feeling like you are included in whether it's a process at work, at school, um, in your communities. Everybody wants to belong and everybody wants to, to be a part of something bigger than themselves and to be heard. And I think uh, pride is, is a great uh, testament to that exact thing. Amazing. Brianna Scurry, you, so you are, you are, you are an American hero. 
thank by the you. way. Uh, yeah. um, and That's again, so we are so we are just so honored. And thank you so much for your time. We cannot wait for this book to come out. My greatest save comes out on June twenty first. You can pre order this. Is this correct? On breescurry.com. Yes, yes, that's correct. Yay. You can pre order right now. Wait, oh, <laughs> one last question before we let you go. Sure. Only because we mentioned Minnesota a couple times. Are you a Vikings <laughs> fan? Okay. So <laughs> don't say you're packing. That's a loaded right? question. <laughs> Please, no. I used to be back okay. in the day because my dad was, you know, how you follow what your family does. Yes, I but do. But now I have to say that my team is Tampa Bay because I love me some Tom Brady. Oh, oh all right. Yeah. I there thought you were going to say the Packers or the Lions or Suze's Bears, which are, well, well. so, okay. I can do <laughs> so Bye. sorry about Bears fans. <laughs> oh. <laughs> wow. I am, um, I kind of. I feel like Brianna, I just had like a therapy session with the uh, Brianna Scurry. That Here was that. so incredible. She's um, just, just a true, true inspiration. And again, a reminder, you can buy her book, My Greatest Save on June 21st, um, but you can also pre-order on briescurry.com. Uh, but shall we get into here for this, Jill? Yes. Mm -hmm. Here for this. Okay. So uh, the United States U.S. Men's National Team had a international friendly against Uruguay um, a couple days ago. And Greg Berhalter was on the sidelines of this game wearing, um, it was an or a muted orange t-shirt, but that is because um, this was uh, in support of, of gun reform. And he expressed support for the players who called on Congress to take action following um, all the mass shootings that we are seeing in this country, um, which has been absolutely horrific and i'm just i i applaud i applaud them using their platform to raise awareness for this um because when you have that platform and you have that kind of power and that voice you should use it and greg berhalter wearing orange um talking about it in the post-game press conference um explaining why this was important and how proud he was of the team for for making this making this a cause that they're getting behind i just thought was really really awesome to see I'm going to co-sign this one with you because Greg Berhalter, you mentioned him saying it in his press conference before he even took questions. He opened that post-game press conference with that. And the U.S. men's national team represents us, sure, on the field, but these are guys that play all over the world. And then they come home to the U.S. and it's supposed to be hoorah, yeah, yeah, woo, 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 American outlaws, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And they come home, and in the short time that they're home, there is – on full display what an epidemic mass shootings are in this country. Yeah. So credit to them. You know, I know Reggie Cannon, a Texas native, being super outspoken, as he often is, and, and doing that. And credit to Greg Berhalter, the team we saw wearing orange armbands, um, sending that letter to Congress. You know, there was a silly little Instagram video put out last week by U.S., soccer of the guys walking out of who they think is going to win the NBA finals. And they mm -hmm. just scream like Celtics, Golden State, Celtics, yeah. Golden State. And Greg Berhalter was the last one. And then maybe because he doesn't watch these kinds of videos, he didn't know you're just supposed to like spew one thing and keep running. <laughs> but he elaborates and it's great. And he says Golden State and he says, because Steve Kerr's the best. Yeah. And I remember thinking in the moment, and this was prior to that, you know, I, I wonder if as Greg Berhalter matures, and grows as a national team manager, like, will he become a little bit more like a Steve Kerr or a Greg Popovich who do take stances and mm -hmm. do tick people off? So I loved seeing that moment, that human, and we, and I know that Greg is an incredibly smart and informed guy and has done this in the past, but I really liked that extra level of stance that U.S. soccer and Greg Berhalter um, took. And, um, you know, I'm excited to ask them kind of more about that and see what hopefully is next and, and what comes. Speaking of the U.S. men's national team, what is on tap? Well, U.S. men's national team action continues. The USA taking on Granada in CONCACAF Nations League on ESPN+. Uh, plus. I'm really excited to be on the call alongside Taylor Twelman and John Champion. And um, we'll see what the fan turnout is like. We'll see what Christian oh Pulisic has to say. Suze, I haven't gotten to talk to you on the air um, since that moment. But I, I promise you that... I really just wanted to know what it felt like being back in the U.S. And yeah, it seemed like an innocent enough play question. In front of your <laughs> fans, and yeah, were the Morocco fans super loud in pregame? Like, yeah, but you got to realize for Morocco, it's a once in a fourteen. Absolutely, from all over the place coming in, 
and uh, they're and and they're pumped up. But maybe silver lining is that some good comes of it. And hey, listen, you can agree, you can disagree. I'm a sideline reporter. I don't have an opinion on it, but there is a lot of value in people being open in a post game interview. So don't go off U.S. soccer world and ruin that because then people hide and then we get generic answers. So if you agree or disagree, embrace it and let's promote it. We we want people to speak about how they feel. And then we get better, right? We all get better and things get better. Sure. Sure. Absolutely. Right? Oh, right? man. Christian Pulisic. I also think that I, I think that people maybe misinterpreted what he was saying just a little bit, but whatever. That's he neither 100% here nor there. 100% did not mean Americans as yes, the exactly. ethnicity. He meant people sporting. Exactly. Red, and I, want to, and I, I think everyone knew that. Okay. I but hope so. Because I, Twitter, boy, boy, was Twitter on fire. After, one more, one after more that. thing on that. I think like, hey, if there's more fandom and that comes from it and there's conversations, that's great. But like, Let's also, U.S. soccer, I know we've been hurt, but, like, let's also, though, celebrate they just won 3 nothing, And, like, yeah. let's talk about three things. Let's not all hone in on I know. one I little know. moment. But then again, who am I to police what people have to say? Oh, good Lord. Social media, I tell you. Um, okay. Yeah. What else is on tap? Good well, question. Tomorrow, June 8th, is World Oceans Day. And in honor of that, we are rocking our prime blue jerseys hello check this out uh you saw these in action just before the international break these are made from recycled material and parlay ocean plastic and are just one of the many efforts around the league to create sustainable projects so for more information on how you can get involved in your club sustainability efforts around the community head on over to mlssoccer.com and i will tell you jill i have gotten one of these like pretty much every season since i've been at mls and these are my favorite. Are you this this color is just I mean it's good on camera. Giving the Vancouver White Caps some love as well. Um no, these are super, super cool. Can I, I can I love. admit something right now? Yes, of course. So our amazing producer Galena uh, hooked us up with these and only largest were left. That's fine. They're very That's big. Fine. Um but I tried today to look cool and like roll up my <laughs> sleeves a little and it didn't go so well. <laughs> and I felt kind of like Tito Vialba or someone. Oh, yeah. I felt almost like trying to do the arm version of the shorts. And then mm-hmm. and then I gave up. And Can I oh, show you what did I, I did? Did I tell you that I learned how they got them really short? Did I tell you this breaking news? No. So I asked Jeff Lorenowitz, how do they get them so short? They're, mm-hmm. they're shorts. Like, what do they yeah. roll them? In? They're rolling them into their underwear. Oh, okay. Well, I that's like, that's that. like, no, I used to roll up my T-shirt into my sports bra. Oh, like my tank. Yeah. So it's the same. So it's the thing. same concept. But my arms had nothing yes. to hold on to. This is what I did to make it cool. Oh, you. Do you want to see mine? Hold on. <laughs> I, I, think just, I tied it. I turned it oh, into wait. a crop top. I guess I tied mine in. Yeah. Did I'm, a little crop crop top action. You look hot. Oh, with my sweatpants. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you. At least you have jeans on, which, you know, That's you're basically, only, you're a normal human being. Because I had to go to an appointment this morning. <laughs> I was out in the, in the, in the universe. I'm proud of you. Thank Putting you. on jeans for me is like a real accomplishment these days, but hey, listen, you do what you got to do. Um, guys, this was so much fun. A huge thanks again to Brianna Scurry for her time and for uh, sharing everything that she did. Go check out her documentary, The Only, on Paramount Plus on July 12th, and also her book, My Greatest Dave, on briescurry.com, which you can pre-order, um, and that comes out on June 21st. So, guys, thank you for watching. See you next time. What's up, everybody? It is Susanna Collins and Jillian Sackovitz, co-hosts of The Call-Up, and if you want more Call-Up action, hit like and subscribe right here on YouTube, right there. And also make sure that you download every episode of The Call Up every single Tuesday at 5 o'clock Eastern Time or anywhere that you get your podcasts. And while you're here, why not check out some of these other videos as well?